Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and today we're going to go back and take a look at the Pi Hole installation one week later after it's gathered some information. We'll also talk about the different ways to configure the network devices to use Pi Hole. So let's get started with today's video. All right, guys, so I'm signed into my Pi Hole server and we're looking at about a week's worth of data collected. The Pi Hole server has been up and running for a little over seven, maybe eight days. And we're looking at a total of almost 31,000 queries coming from 11 clients. 4,200 of those queries were blocked, equaling about 13.6% total blocked. Now, if we take a look at the chart here, it's the total queries over the last 24 hours. And if you move through the timeline, you can actually see at different times of the day, the number of queries that were permitted and the number that were blocked. Looking down at this graph here, you can actually see the different devices and types of queries. For example, the number of IP4 queries, IP6 queries, pointer type queries, HTTPS, etc. Again, if we scroll down even further, comparing to last week where we didn't have much information because we had just booted up the server for several minutes, now we have larger lists of permitted domains and larger list of blocked domains. Same with the top clients and the top clients block. Now, looking at this overall, it's just telling me that Pi Hole is working and it is protecting the network and blocking ads and things like that. However, if I did want to drill down into any one of these clients to, to dig deeper and see what's going on, I could, for example, come over to the top clients blocked only and click on this particular device and take a look at all of the domains and all of the records. It gives you the record type. It gives you the time that it occurred. It gives you the domain that was blocked. And this just goes on. I mean, you can see here there's a total of, it looks like 85 blocked pages. So again, just wanted to take you back to look at a week's worth of data collected to show you um, that there really are things going on on the network that sometimes we're not aware of. That said, let's come over to the left menu here. I want to go to the blacklist because during this last week or so, I did discover a little bit of an issue that we're going to talk about later on in this video. So you notice here I blocked quicktechsolutions.com, and that's my own website. And again, we're going to talk about that shortly. Just remember here, I'm showing you that it is in the blacklist. I just entered it. I came up here and I typed the information in and I said, add to blacklist. Okay. So that's that. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is how to get the clients on the network to use Pi Hole. So there are a couple of different ways and I am going to stress this right now. I'm going to show this to you on the edge router. The concepts are the same, but it might be done a little differently. Every router manufacturer will vary, right? So you might have to Google your router model and see how this is done. But basically the concept is you want to point the devices on your network to the IP address of the Pi Hole server. You want to put that in the DNS uh, areas, either on the device or in the router itself. So we're going to take a look at how that's done on the edge router right now. And there are a couple of different ways. The first way is if I wanted everything that's behind the router to go through Pi Hole. And I would just come down to the dashboard's main page, click on system. And then here under name server, I would just enter instead of here, you see, I have Cloudflare. I would just enter the IP address of the Pi Hole server here. Now notice I did not do that. What I prefer to do is do it by network. So I come up to here under services and here are all my different subnets. I just have it working for my main network. So under my main network, if I click on view details, you can see here under the first DNS entry, I have the IP address of my Pi Hole server. And that's really nice because it takes all of the clients on that particular network and it will filter them through Pi Hole. Now, that's not to say I couldn't take a second network or a third network. I could do one or multiple just by changing the IP address here under the services tab. And then obviously you can just choose to take a particular device or maybe a number of devices, maybe two or three or four for whatever reason, and just do it that way on the device itself. So instead of going through the router, 
you can come up to your device's adapter settings. In this case, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go to System Preferences and Network. And if I click here on Advanced, under DNS, you can see it's pulling um, the devices pulling from 1.1.1.1. But if I didn't have anything else set through the router, I could then just add the IP address of the Pi-hole server here, and then just this device would be going through the Pi-hole server. So there are a couple of different ways. Again, it's going to vary depending on your router model, how you do it in the router, or if you do it at the device level. So in testing out the Pi-hole server during the first week of operation, I noticed something. I noticed that it was working fine in Safari. It was blocking ads and blocking website domains that I had in the blacklist. However, in Chrome, I noticed that the ads were still appearing. The blacklisted sites were still loading in the browser. So I was wondering about that. I was like, hmm. So I did a quick Google search, and that revealed with secure DNS or DOH, DNS over HTTPS, the Pi hole doesn't work. So in order to get it to work with Chrome, you had to turn off a feature in the Chrome preferences called secure DNS. So I'm going to show you that in the next clip, and I'm going to show you examples of it not working with the secure DNS turned on and it working in Chrome with the secure DNS turned off. And you'll see examples of the ads loading or not loading, as well as the blacklisted website that I have in there, Quick Tech Solutions, either loading or not loading, depending on the state of the secure DNS. So let's roll that clip now. Okay, so I'm going to narrate through this recorded clip. First thing I'm going to show you is that I have Safari running in the background and Chrome running in the foreground. Next, we'll go into Chrome's security settings, and I'll show you where the secure DNS is located. So it's under privacy and security, under security, and just scroll down a little bit under advanced, and you'll see use secure DNS, and you'll see here that it is enabled. Here I'm just showing you, I'm just reiterating what I mentioned earlier in the video that I have quicktechsolutions.com on the blacklist. So the first thing we're going to do in Chrome is bring up the New York Times website. And there's an ad at the top of the page that you'll see it loads. Now, I do want to mention that the laptop that was doing the screen recording is a little underpowered, so it's taking a little longer than normal, but you'll see here, there's the ad. And it typically shouldn't load, right? Pi hole server's running. So now we'll go over to Safari and we'll type in the New York Times website. And again, it's taking a little longer than normal to load, but you'll see the site will come up. There's where the ad would have displayed and boom, the site loads without the ad. So definitely know that Pi Hole is doing its job. Now we'll jump back over to Chrome and we'll bring up Quick Tech Solutions. And technically it's on the blacklist. It should not load. But again, there you see the site loads, no problem, in Chrome with secure DNS turned on. So now we'll jump back over to Safari and we'll load Quick Tech Solutions again. And here you see that it's being blocked by the blacklist. So the next series of steps you're seeing is I'm going to go into the security settings on Chrome and I'm going to disable secure DNS. Then I'm going to clear the browsing history on Chrome and restart the browser. Okay, we're bringing up Chrome again after it's been cleared and restarted. And this time we're going to do the same exact thing, but you'll notice something different. So we're bringing up the New York Times website.
and boom, this time the ad does not load. Now when I attempt to bring up Quick Tech Solutions, which again is on the blacklist, you'll notice here as well in Chrome that it does not load. And there you go. So I'm not telling you to turn off Secure DNS or leave it on. That's a decision that you have to make. I just wanted to show you this because when I saw that Chrome wasn't working, I just wanted to figure out why. If you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos that I have listed up above. Please remember, subscribe, like, and share this video. And I wanna thank you, as I always do, for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions, as always. Please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.